it's time to talk about a really underrated, short-lived classic shoe, the Nike Mad Jibe. These shoes came out around 2007. They hit the outlet stores and eventually were marked down to clearance prices before selling out. Nowadays, it's actually really tough to find a cool colorway and good size of a pair of Mad Jibes. Now, Mad Jibes are actually hybrids of a classic Sperry Topsider, the first boat shoe going all the way back to the 1930s, and a pair of Nike Dunks, the first ever basketball shoe that was made to match collegiate uniforms from 1985. Come on over here, let's have a look at this pair of Mad Jibes and Sperry Topsiders. So the Mad Jibe looks a lot like the Sperry Topsider. Look at the upper of these shoes, in particular the navy upper, but look at that white iconic stitching that you see. Beautiful pattern that goes all the way back to the mid 30s. It's no surprise that Nike took inspiration from this classic boat shoe and created their very own casual lifestyle shoe. So this shoe, the Sperry Topsider, was invented by a guy named Paul Sperry in 1935 to work on his boat. He was trying to come up with a shoe that would grip the boat and make it so that he wouldn't slip, but also a shoe that would not mark up the boat. He came up with this iconic herringbone pattern on the outsole of the Sperry Topsider, and the fact that the outsoles were light in color meant that they didn't mark up the surface of the boat. So going back to the pair of Mad Jibes, the outsole on this pair of shoes is different. It's not that classic herringbone. Have a look, it's a very iconic outsole. It comes from a Nike Dunk. And that's what I mean about the Mad Jibe being a combination of a Sperry Topsider and a Nike Dunk. So we've got a pair of white Nike Dunks right here. We'll have a look underneath here at the outsole. It looks exactly like the outsole on the Mad Jibe. And we'll flip over right here a pair of brown Mad Jibes that have gum outsoles so you can compare the outsoles next to one another. When the Nike executives were visiting the Shoeseum, I was telling them that their website is the perfect vehicle to tell stories and the inspirations behind the shoes. They should be selling a shoe like the Mad Jibe and you should be able to hover on every bit and piece of the shoe and Nike's website should tell you where it came from. So you should look at the bottom of the shoe click on it and it should tell you all about the Nike Dunk. How the Dunk came out in 1985, it was the first basketball shoe worn by NCAA colleges and the shoes matched the uniforms of those colleges. I mean, it's just a perfect vehicle to tell all of these stories and Nike shoes are so rich in history and heritage. Come back here and have a look at this pair of brown mad jibes. I wanna show you another interesting feature on this shoe. So have a look at the lacing right here, these D-ring laces. They actually go all the way back to the Nike Sting from the mid-1970s. And the Nike Sting is actually a pre-Montreal shoe, the shoe made for Steve Prefontaine to wear in the Montreal Olympics, except it's not a track spike, it was made for the street. But anyway, this was the first Nike ever to have these D-ring laces, and then here they are again on the Mad Jibe. How cool would it be if on Nike.com you could go hover onto these D-ring laces and it would take you back to the Nike Sting and then take you back to stories about Steve Prefontaine. It would be amazing and Nike's website is the perfect vehicle to do that. All of these shoes are so rich in history and heritage and it just kills me when they're being sold without anybody telling the stories. And that's what I'm here for. It's been a real pleasure walking you through the history of the Mad Jibe and comparing it with these Sperry Topsiders and also Nike Dunks.